What's up, it's Dave. Hey, listen, did you know that everybody hates AI-generated art? I mean, literally everyone, and the faster that it goes away, the quicker we get to pull our heads out of the sand. That's what we're gonna talk about today, but first, you ever heard that fictional tale about the man with the box? Imagine a man is approaching you and he's got a box, and on that box is a button. This one doesn't have a button, but imagine that it does. And he says to you, if you press this button, I will give you one million dollars. That seems too good to be true, so you suspiciously ask, okay, well, what happens if I press the button. And he calmly says to you, well, somebody you don't know will die. Well, if you happen to be one of those greedy and careless types, you press the button, the man hands you a case of money, and all is well with the world. Except for that one guy, whoever that is. But what you don't realize is the man goes down the street and he tells another person the exact same thing and they also press the button. But this time, you're the one who dies. Dun, dun, dun. So the other day I made some AI generated art and as you can plainly see, I didn't die. I can't confirm or deny whether another artist died after I did it though. Considering I generated about a hundred different images, it's entirely possible I'm on a creative killing spree. If an artist friend of yours is suddenly not answering their phone, don't look at me. Okay, nobody's gonna die because we made some AI art. Although if you go on Twitter and Instagram, you'd think the entire world was going to end. I haven't seen a topic more hotly contested through tweets since, well, NFTs. And some people honestly believe that AI art is going to be the end of the creative world as we know it. Now I have no intention of rehashing the entire argument here, but uh, after using Midjourney, which is one of the newfangled AI art apps, I've been, you know, I've got, I've got some opinions about this. I'll talk about my observations, talk about pros and cons, and also share about like what I think about the future and how actually I'm going to possibly, maybe, maybe apply some of this to my own work. But before I do that, check out this piece I made with Midjourney. Thanks. Now, on the off chance you have no idea what I'm talking about, AI stands for artificial intelligence and AI art is basically art that's generated from different references that are pulled from all over across the internet and then turned into art based on prompts that are given by the users. Let's say you had an immediate need to see what a narwhal would look like with bacon wings. Well, you could do that. That's really absurd and ridiculous, but there actually have been some really amazing pieces of art generated with these apps. In fact, this image right here actually won a blue ribbon at a state fair in Colorado. And immediately after, the entire art world lost its mind. And ironically, the people who are most upset about this are the artists, designers, and illustrators who are primarily digital artists during their fits of rage. I wonder if they even stop for half a second to think about all of the devices that we currently use for our art and how that put other people out of business. For instance, the typesetting industry, which practically disappeared overnight because of the advent of graphical interfaces on computers and Microsoft Word. I'm not going to talk about all the out-of-work typesetters. It's a long, labored conversation that's been beaten to death. Is it possible that the same thing could happen to artists and designers like us? To answer that question, let's just ask ask some photographers. Before I go on, I just want to invite you to go down to the comments and express to me and to the group, uh, you know, how do you feel about all this? Do you feel good? Feel bad? I don't know. Go down there and share your thoughts. Make sure that you're nice because, you know, you don't want to have Dave break out the band hammer on you, do you? I look forward to the conversation. Back when photography was first invented and really starting to gain popularity, the art world just lost their mind then too because they thought, oh my god, it's a cheapened version of making art and it's going to put all of the artists out of work. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not how it played out. And I personally believe that the situation will basically be the same between AI art and, well, us. However, I do think artists are going to have to start making some choices. Back in the 80s and early 90s, my mom used to be a commercial artist representative and she actually had a stable of artists, like between 10 and 20 different artists, photographers, illustrators that she would work with on a regular basis. This was pre-internet and obviously these artists didn't have a way to directly connect with agencies and businesses like we do now. She had to be the go-between. She would take the work of the artist to the businesses and say, hey, use my artist. Or they would come to her and say, hey, you have this artist we want to use. And of course, the internet did happen and graphic design became more popular and a lot of her artists had to make a decision at that point whether they were going to go into the graphic design field or go do something else. And in fact, there was one artist of hers, a guy by the name of R. Kent and Nelson, who had to make that exact same choice. He thought, well, I can go into graphic design or I can hunker down and just go 100% into my art. Well, he chose this path and it actually worked out really well for him. He didn't go the digital route, which may have hurt him a little bit from the aspect of being able to share himself and promote himself on internet these days, but he's been very lucrative in the fine art career and been, you know, people have been buying his work for very large amounts of money. I don't think he, it hurts him too much that he's not doing well on Instagram. The thing about AI art is that we're at the very beginning, like the very tippy tippy top of the iceberg. And, like not even anywhere close to beta anything. AI can render some truly amazing art, but the problem is that it's it's not perfect. Now does art need to be perfect? No, but if we're talking about computer technology, 
rendering art, well then it needs to work towards perfect first and then be able to pull itself back and render imperfectly in a perfect way. Be able to do something really, really well so that you can back off and make it look a little bit cooler and not so polished purposely. The other thing I'm seeing a problem with is that there's a little bit of a homogenization happening. But like if you go in and you type some prompts, sometimes you'll get responses that are similar to what somebody else did, even though they may have entered different prompts. For instance, I did this one as a surfer standing on a beach. I did it in folk art style. Later on, I saw other versions that I thought was like, wait a minute, is it generating my art again? Somebody else using relatively similar prompts, but instead of being a surfer, it was a guy standing next to a boat. But essentially, they, if you saw the two pieces side by side, you would think they were part of the same series. I'm hoping what happens is the AI gets more intelligent and figures that stuff out, but I'm also a little bit fearful that things are just gonna start moving more towards the middle, which is no fun for art. It's also a bit of a guessing game because it's not very customizable. I mean, you can do some pretty detailed customizing with your prompts, but if you want to detail something in a particular image and like say, well, I want the guy that's standing in the picture to be just this direction, you don't have that option. For now, you just kind of have to roll the dice a little bit, accept the random serendipity of things, and just, you know, wait for the AI to catch up as far as its speed and processing and figure out how to customize things. The AI will get smarter. In fact, it already is smarter now than it was when I started making these images. Anytime anybody renders an image and then goes down a certain direction with that particular image, the AI is learning from their choices. Somebody else could render the exact same thing and go down a completely different direction and the AI is saying, okay, I get it, what the, the differentiation between these two things. So let's create better variations. Problem is we have no idea how long it's going to take to get to that level of perfection. It could be one year or it could be 10 years. So we just got to go about our business and stay vigilant and keep an eye on things and hopefully the, you know, the robots don't take over. <laughs> It is very important for you to stay abreast of what's happening because you may find yourself in a situation where it's time to make a choice. Better to be prepared for those choices now instead of getting hit in the face with them after it's too late. All right, these are the things that I believe about AI art right now. First, it's inevitable. You don't have a choice of the matter. The gin is out of the bottle and there's no way you're getting that thing back in the bottle. So you might as well just embrace it. The second thing about this is that AI art really makes us more of curators than it does creators because the art is being created by the program and we are just saying, yes, that one, yes, this one, no, that one, yes, this one. We're not actually making it. We're just dictating which ones we get to keep. And that's not really a big deal because if you think of all the ready-made artists like Duchamp, Warhol, Coons, Murakami, I mean, they're basically these people people are rich doing exactly that. Curating ideas, letting other people make them, and then taking the credit. Damien Hurst, I'm looking at you. Third, currently, I consider AI art to be highly conceptual, but not ready for prime time. It's not ready to be finished work yet. There are exceptions to that, of course, but because of the details that I've mentioned earlier, it's just, it's not quite there. Like, I can't feel confident to say, I'm gonna generate something and that's gonna be the final word. However, we can use this conceptual aspect to our benefit. Let's say we have like this random idea and we don't wanna just go down this rabbit hole of like, can I draw it? Can I make it? How do I make it? How, am I gonna spend hours doing this? What if we instead just go clickety clickety clack into our computer and typed it into Mid Journey and said, find me a narwhal with bacon for wings. And then we see the image and we say, yes, that works. I'm gonna replicate it myself. Or it says, nope, that's not working. Try again. Fourth, we can take these concepts and actually put it into our own work, incorporate it with our own style. I rendered these images. They aren't indicative of my actual style. They just kind of lack the depth that I'd normally like to use in my work. That said, I definitely look at this stuff and say, I could use this for something. I could definitely turn this into something cooler. In fact, it's entirely possible that the thumbnail used for this particular video actually incorporated some of that art in it. So, you know, there you go. Finally, and this one is actually the most important thought in regards to this whole conversation. Your creative output isn't dictated by the way you put paint on a canvas or by the way you draw on your iPad with your Apple Pencil. What makes your creative work your creative work has nothing to do with tools. It has everything to do with the natural intelligence that you already possess that exists between your two ears. And as long as you don't close yourself off to the possibilities, the AI will never be able to replicate that. And if you want to close yourself off, well, okay, that's your choice, but the death robots are definitely coming for you. Come with me if you want to live. The way I see it right now, we all have three choices. One, you can get on the bus, you can learn how to use AI to your benefit so that you can incorporate it into your work and adapt it to fit your style. Over time, the AI 
AI is going to learn from you and maybe you learn from it. And as you go, you may create or curate, as the case may be, some of the best stuff you've ever made in your life. Two, you can use it as just a way to brain dump ideas. And then you can take those ideas and then turn them into something cool in your studio or wherever it is that you want to work. Or three, you can give the AI the proverbial middle finger and just find ways to make your art so damn good that it becomes exemplary and impossible for AI to generate anything close to as cool as what you're making. Ultimately, AI is a tool and it's no different than these brushes right here. So you can make a choice. You can use the tools to your advantage or you could just toss them in the bin if you don't want to use them. That's okay. There's some brushes in here I never touch. And if you do decide to make the plunge on AI and use that tool to make some stuff that you can actually sell, well, then you're going to want to watch this video right here. And just as a reminder, if we happen to have a lively conversation around this topic, which I anticipate we will, be nice. All right. Okay. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.